The second win series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. Say I'm a bleary-eyed Ron Cameron. You were out with Sid. No, Confess. I was not Yes, out you with were. Sid. Till the wee hours of the morning on no, Saturday I night. Was not out Sunday with Sid. morning, right? Saturday. No. You and you and Sid closed down a couple of those places no, in town. No, no, Is that right? No, no. Sid. Was where were you? I, I couldn't make it at you all. Couldn't I make couldn't make it at all, Bruce. Well, listen, uh, I mean, you missed, <laughs> it was fun you missed Bud Lynch clapping yes. in center ice. <laughs> Sorry, how did he do that? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> right. Listen, well, you know, one of the all-time greats in this town, they have a night for him, and you're nowhere to be found. I talked to him last week. I tried to get him to do this television show. Oh, yeah. I tried to get him to do the television show, and he said, I won't come on with Ronnie at all. <laughs> no, no, he, <laughs> he'd come on with me. He doesn't like you at all, because he never sees you. He doesn't know what you look like. He never sees you. <laughs> Not you, that often. You didn't have the guts to come on last time. You were right. I was, right? I was covering the Olympics in 1984. Yeah, but last how come time, you, he wasn't scheduled before when you were here? You had him on. Yeah, I had him on. I figured you would once again bore all of our viewers with your tales of the way hockey used to be, Rod. A lot better than so now. Great. And Bill Gadsby was the greatest defenseman who ever lived, and Normie Ullman was a better center than Wayne Gretzky. Ten times. Ten, oh, better. Ten Norm times. Ullman was ten times better. All you have to do center. is just let Gretzky play when the men were right, there. Okay, we got to get, uh, get, get into the show. Like we we got to get into the show. We'll, let, we'll, we'll continue now. Uh, I'm Bob Page. Oh, we missed my that God, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and our sponsors in the program radio today. Station. Yes, WRIF loves me. I have a guaranteed they love contract. You. We've changed the morning show. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate that. They, love, they the, loved the your partner. They, they put a knife in his back. Well, but they? I've got a guaranteed contract. So, so did I'm, he. I'm on in the morning. So did he. No, he didn't. But what, he's still working What's there. your guaranteed contract? My guaranteed contract guaranteed is that I'm going to be gonna, there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> Can I continue with the people Go who ahead. paid to be on this show? Sports Fans Journal. Uh, oh, you want to mention that? Mm -hmm. Your new issue's coming out this week, right? Coming out this week, and we got a story that's going to really, should be headlines of the major papers. Well, there's, no, to there's no question you've done an outstanding job with it. And the thing that I like so much about Sports Fans Journal is your continuing sense of fair play toward everybody in sports. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you, as I have, have read all the issues so far, you've noticed there's been one thing that's missing from Sports Fans Journal. And that is no woman's viewpoint. Ron Cameron, in another brilliant coup as he continues to sign, only the biggest of big name columnists has now gone out and gotten a women's sports. Now I don't have Alice Cooper. Not Alice Cooper. <laughs> and here she is debuting in the fifth edition coming up of Sports Fans Journal. <laughs> Now, Stevie Nicks wanted to yes. write. Is that Stevie yes, Nicks? it's true, ladies and gentlemen. Stevie Nicks coming up in issue number five, writing women's sports and sports is, fans journal. And, Doyle is in and I understand also, I read in YT, the Detroit News, that you and Stevie have been seen around town. Is that true? Well, Are you dating Stevie Nicks these days? Listen, uh, <laughs> Danny McLean's still writing from his jail cell. <laughs> and Stevie Nicks is not writing. Ann Doyle I thought is she was writing. writing. Stevie Nicks isn't writing now? No, oh, Ann Doyle was writing. Bob Seger? I haven't contacted you. You were supposed to give me a number for his attorney. There's no such person. As usual, Bob Page, screw that. I, I haven't gotten into the rest of the sponsors here, the people who pay to be here. But they should, uh, you can still get time to get a Christmas subscription, even though it'll be there a little bit late if you mail it in. Now we'll give you the address right. later on and how you can subscribe to Sports Fans Journal. Al Dietrich Olsenbeel has paid to be on this program. All right. Uncle Al and the Pontiac I had to, Waterford area. Don't know why with Where you. Telegraph ends, the deals begin, and Uncle Al now has his year-end sale in progress. The Tangerine Room, Detroit's hottest new nights, spot just east of the Renaissance Center in the Rivertown District and Plymouth Rock Saloon, Peter Lotterio's other place. We have Warren Siegel, the attorney in Southfield. If you need a lawyer anywhere in southeastern Michigan, call Warren Siegel at 424-8384. We have the Windsor Raceway, where your American dollar buys you more I hope it buys you more than the Canadian dollar. 7.30. I hope so. Time. In fact, you're talking about Bob Probert. I heard it on your radio show the other day. Oh. And you were wondering how Bob Probert could do $20,000 damage to oh, the Oh, that's Canadian money. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. It was, right, actually, it, was, that it was actually yeah, $2,500 <laughs> damage to the car. You know, you're right, Doc. <laughs> and Ed Sports, Ed Wharton and Company in 
the heart of beautiful downtown Plymouth on Main Street for all your <laughs> hockey and sporting good needs. Yes, I mentioned Warren Siegel, the attorney. We have another one of Detroit's finest attorneys. You have called all sports agents dogs. Rick Broad knows about this. The agent Let for him come out. the I'll agent. The, Rick Broad is here. The agent for Alan Trammell, Sweet Lou Whitaker, Ricky Leach, and who else you got these days? John Long. Keep going. All right, we'll find out from Rick in a minute, and he is going to be here to debate you. Although I, I, debate I, I, I will say this, you were absolutely right last week, and I never thought that, that Jack Morris would remain with Jack the Tigers. Jack Morris squirming back. Squirming back? Squirming back. Is that right? Well, he didn't, come, he didn't come crawling back. No, and when the arbitrator you know, gives Jack Morris his money, he'll have the it's last laugh. You know, a guy that I have a lot of respect for is Lance Parrish. Now, Lance, but you're treating me unfairly. Here's a guy that missed most of last year due to a bad back. Now he want, now he's getting a raise up to a million dollars a year. Don't even know who can play. Pena makes one point two million. Gary Carter makes but two million. But they play. Well, come on. Now Lance Parrish plays. How do you know he was that's hurt a this bad last situation year. situation with a bad back. You don't know he's going to play. I think Tom, Tom Rich, Parrish's agent, was quoted as saying in the New York Times over the weekend that Lance is through with the Tigers. I think that's just more posturing. Well, it's, I think you know, Parrish will sign by January. That's want to get their name but in the Ron, paper. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. Kirk Gibson has already filed a grievance. The arbitrator is hearing it on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. He is going to, I think if he has to, subpoena baseball commissioner Peter Ubroth. Morris will file a grievance. There's no question. It's apodictic that the owners are in collusion. I they are going to, the Ron, the, this arbitrator is going to void the Major League Baseball Players Association contract with the owners, and there will be a strike, if not before the 1987 season, let during him, the season. Let him. I hope these are good, because uh, most, most athletes today are, uh, baseball and other sports are dogs anyway. They don't get their way when the inmates don't run the asylum, they get awful upset. I've supported Jack Morris, as you know, uh, throughout this thing, but uh, Jack, Madonna, Jack, baby. Jack, Just a baby. Jack left me. Jack left me with a couple things, one in particular. Jack, one thing that Jack said I couldn't believe, when he compared himself to the plight of Jackie Robinson. Isn't that awful? Now, Jackie, tell, tell Jack, now Jackie Robinson is one of the greatest men who has ever lived in sports. And what he endured to cross the color line and become the first black athlete in Major League Baseball was just incredible. For Jack Morris to sit there in Jack New York Morris, and compare himself to Jack, I won't too. say that either. I will. But I think if Jack had to reconsider that statement, I think he realizes how foolish he looked comparing he, himself to Jackie He Robinson. always looks foolish when he opens it. You know something? If Jack Morris's arm was as good as his mouth, he'd win 25 games a year. Well, he won 21 last year. With a good ball club. Yeah, that's true. Um, what also is foolish, of course, is the Detroit Lions. I didn't even see you out there on Sunday. And, and maybe that's a credit to you. Uh -huh. I had the consummate poor taste to actually show up and cover that Nobody game on Sunday. No, you're not considered a brain surgeon. 35,000 people. I never thought I'd see the day when they had such a horrible crowd in the no, Silver Dome. So something. few of them left at the finish, and what a Jerry joke Green, it is. Jerry Green has called for... Uh, Russ Thomas to retire, it's not going to happen. He, he wants to try to get you fired one more time See, before Ronnie, he retires. That's what it's come to, though. See, we always call finish, for Russ Thomas to be ahead. fired. This let guy's been here so long, he's talking about retiring let now. Let me finish, and then you can continue talking. What I'm trying to say is Russ Thomas' goal in life is to get you fired one more time like he did the other oh, time at that, at that uh, station, over, you know, the other station. Let me but. tell you something else. Russ Thomas would love to see this television show ended. Well, but as long as you and I are sitting here, we're going to continue to tell the truth about the way this clown bungles and mismanages oh. the Detroit Lions the and about Bill Clark. I'm going to the locker room yesterday after the game, after Daryl Rogers hopefully reamed these guys for their abysmal performance, and two well-known Detroit reporters who are very close to the Lions are standing mm -hmm. outside. I won't name them because I don't want to embarrass them. And one guy says to the other, well, if you're Bill Ford, what do you say to him now? What do you do now? The other guy says, if I were Bill Ford, I'd fire all 45 players and fire all the coaching staff. And I said, do you think Bill Ford, when he wakes up Monday morning, is going to look in the mirror? think he ever looks in the no, mirror? No, he does look And the one guy says, well, what can he do? What can he do? The guy took the franchise over in 1963 well, and has run it into the ground. He's got no clue. No question, just no like Bruce clue. Norris did with the Red Wings Absolutely. for many, many years. There's no doubt about that. Now we got some. Now, now I see where Peter Klima is upset. Can you believe that? Can you believe? Well, let me let me tell you something. Peter Klima has got all the talent in the world to play this game. He should score 50 goals a year with his talent. Offensively, but he's got to just grow up. Somebody hollered at him. He said the coach hollered at me. I'm scared. I can't play. If you're afraid of the coach. Is that one reason maybe you don't go in the corners? Peter Klima is, as I mentioned, a great talent. Grow up, Peter. But again, that's typical of the I, athlete. I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand, though, how you can treat him as you have with such soft gloves and jump on John O'Gradnick. You don't hear O'Gradnick complaining about this. I mean, to my mind, Peter Klima is an absolute joke. This guy has a horrible attitude yeah, on agree. and off I the agree. ice. And I think maybe... While they can still get something for him, they ought to unload him. Well, I said that about John O'Gronick. They're going to hang on to John O'Gronick so, so long that they're not going to be able to get anything yeah, for him. And we'll John O'Gronick is, is basically right. a flow. I do not say Peter Klima can float, but he doesn't float like John O'Gronick. 
Oh, Grodnick's just one end of the ice. Peter Klima does work to come back. He does skate. If he feels, Grodnick just floats. If Klima feels he has a chance to get the puck or score a goal, then he'll put out a little bit. And that's the extent what of What about Grodnick? That's the extent what of What about Grodnick? I think Grodnick goes up and down. Grodnick's not a great oh defensive God, player. Not but, a great uh, defensive player. Not at all. But how many guys are in the league? How many guys what are, are great defensive say? players in the league? You want to find out how good John O'Grodnick is? I said it before. Watch him without the puck, then you'll see him float. I want to close on a podcast. Bob Prober. No, we're, 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 we're talking well, about Bob Prober. You know, I, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, I, so your radio show, some people called you. People stopped me on the street, and they say, what do you think about Bob Prober? What the hell are you supposed to say? Right. What can you what think you about? What you say is this. He's a sick, he, troubled young man. He's a sick, troubled young man, but... He should, he's going to have to go to jail for this. Because, I think so. Be, because of the situation they said, if you violate your probation, go to jail. All right, if a guy has got a problem drinking, fine. So that happens. But a guy can be so stupid, like Bob Probert is, and goes out and drive. You know if you're caught. Hey, if you're drunk, they're not going to do anything to you if you don't drive. Yeah. So why drive? And, I think, and because his friends obviously are, are, are bigger boneheads than he is. That's a good point. By allowing him to that's do that. That's what Eisenman Bob, said. Bob, yeah. the, the fact still yeah. remains, you've got to know in your own system, though, yeah. hey, if you're not supposed to drink, you say, hey, I've got to have a drink. Drew a drink. But make sure somebody drives you home. Don't drive. I don't care if you've had one drink. All right, I want to get to Rick He's a Rode. trouble young man and obviously a very confused I, young I man. I want to close. Let's close on a positive note. Joel Lapointe of the Free Press always says we always seem to be mad about something. Let's say something positive. I know right. the Pistons are playing super basketball. Yeah, I love next this. Next show, we want to do a commentary I on that. I love this kid, Dennis Rodman. Yeah. I love his enthusiasm. And I watched, the, a little too much. I watched the Philadelphia game on Saturday night. I saw more block shots in one quarter from them than I saw all last year from the whole Bob, damn team. Are still laughing at my 50 wins? Yes. And at you. Hey, and Rick Brewer is here to laugh at you, too, which he'll do Let right do after it. these messages. After what I say to him, we'll see what happens. <laughs> The new tax laws may make it better than ever for you to lease rather than buy a car, and Al Dietrich Oldsmobile is the place to lease. Uncle Al has made a special purchase of 140 beautiful new 1987 Oldsmobiles, all types. You can actually lease a new Olds Calais for as little as $199 a month with nothing down. How about the Sierra for as little as $219 a month, or a Delta 88 for as little as $239 a month? See Uncle Al for details. This is Uncle Al reminding you to come out to 1177 Oakland Avenue in Pontiac where Telegraph ends, the deals begin. Hockey season's here, and Ed Sports is the place for all your team equipment needs, from a huge selection of replica jerseys to Canadian, Christian, Sherwood, and Montreal brand sticks. Bauer, CCM, and Dau skates, ideal for holiday gift giving. But hockey's not all Ed Sports has to offer. Jackets, hats, and shirts with your company logo, and much, much more. Ed's is located on Main Street in the heart of downtown Plymouth. Take it from owner Ed Worden, and for price and selection, you can't do better than Ed Sports, member Michigan Trade Association. Thanks real quickly. Sports Fans Journal, it's Christmas time. Did you get that sports fan on your list, that gift? Well, Sports Fans Journal is perfect. With Denny McLean writing right from his jail cell, Ernie Harwell, Ray Lane, Jim Northrup, Lem Varney, Al Ackerman, Ann Doyle, Vince Doyle, so many people locally and nationally. Yes, Denny's from his jail cell writing, as is Larry King, the syndicated radio TV talk show, Don Cherry, Dick Vitale. These are real people in sports, not the Nicks. 40s we got today. Stevie no, Nicks. Bob Feller, who, unlike Jack Morris, is a real pitcher. And you've got George <laughs> Allen and people like that. This guy won 20 games more than, but a lot more than Jack Morris. Well, and he was with bad ball clubs. He had a couple of good ones, though. And you've got a whole Mike Downey's writing Eli Zarek to subscribe. All you have to do is send a $15 check or money order, payable to Sports Fans Journal 2. Sports Fans Journal, P.O. Box 12170, Birmingham, Michigan, 48012. Or pick it up at your local newsstand, Sports Fans Journal, with the, the issue coming out for the month of January, dated February. It's got a big, big story, and I think you'll really like it, and I think this should make uh, some people squirm. And we're back on Sports Fans Journal. Our guest is a close personal friend of mine. Sports Fans Journal, you're back. Oh, I beg your pardon. See, I'm so brainwashing this. Back on Sports View today. You are a close confused. personal friend of folks. mine, Rick Broad, the noted sports agent who represents Trammell, Whitaker, Rick Leach, Jai Long, people like that. Uh, if you were with us on our last program, I'm sure you saw it, Rick. Hopefully you did. Oh, with the Toronto Wonderful Blue Jays catcher. Ron Cameron stated, A, there is no collusion among major league owners, not to sign free agents. B, Rick Roden is a better pitcher than Jack Morris and deserves that. more. 
say that. We can get the tape. I said I said that uh, that Rick Roden has pitched as good as Jack Morris the last okay. years. He's been with a bad ball club, and that's why his record doesn't. doesn't and he it. also has said in the past that all agents are dogs. Now you've been over to my house for dinner before, and I didn't I, I didn't feed you uh, K9 12 or anything like that. You I mean, you ate normal. normal. No, you didn't. No, no, you didn't. Not Alpo. You had normal food. Would you care to respond to this silliness? Well, I think that uh, there definitely is some kind of conspiracy going on in baseball oh, today. Oh, like a truth. I agent. think if you look at the aura, the aura of the negotiations, what do you feel from these negotiations? A guy like uh, the owner in, uh, in Minnesota, uh, worth more than three hundred million dollars. Uh, so that's, that's cannot, beside the point. All right, the has a team. About, that's correct. Has a team, a sports franchise that could benefit greatly from the presence of a pitcher such as Jack Morris. They Why not pay the man $2 million a year? Let because him come in and play. Because they're not going to win with him. Why should they? They might as well lose without him. But, but at least he's, he's showing the fans that he's putting forth an effort that he's oh, trying to do. You know, what that, happened that, that to the winning? Sick, right? What happened to that the bottom line sick. of professional sports going all out to win? What's what's going on oh, now? So agents can get their percentage and and their clients can get a lot of money. Is that what it is? It's all about bull. Is bull. it about mediocre teams uh, about uh, mediocre sitting there with teams fans because, coming in because, supporting the, the, the sport it's anyway? Mediocre. I agree with you because these some of these clowns, including Jack Morris, are overpaid. All right. Under the issue the issue is that. is there a conspiracy or isn't there a conspiracy? Listen, do you and know? I do you know, the, you know the owners man, of baseball? I think all when the a man. Do I know all the owners? No, I don't know all the owners. Then you would know there's no conspiracy because some of these guys are. Do you know? All the owners. No, I don't. Then why do you do say, say there this? isn't a conspiracy? George Steinbrenner, for, for one thing, George, nobody's going to tell Steinbrenner anything. These guys, and I'll tell you why there's no collusion. When you one year a, contract, you why you would not you? Steinbrenner you want me to take you why no at, the, at a one year contract? And, and see what happens. He may be one pitcher happens? away because from winning the, the championship. he's got three agents that are more important to his ball club than Jack Morrison have done more for the Yankees than Jack Morrison has done. So that's what you deal that with. Tells you, I think that tells you something. I think if you look to the vibrations, if you look at the, the aura surrounding these negotiations, something fishy is going if on. I, something. Can I interject something here? Uh, to, to bring, uh, to We're talking, but comment, you get your two cents To comment on the point that you made a moment ago. There's an interesting article in the New York Times, which I know you didn't see on Sunday, talking about what Steinbrenner is doing, how he's making this ridiculous, specious claim about wanting to sign his own free agents first. He has just freed up because he's not going to have the immortal John Count Montefusco, um, Britt Byrne, as George Cull would say, <laughs> and one other player, I can't remember who it was back. He has just freed up $2.2 million. Freed it up. Dollars he hasn't freed he, it up? He, no, he's, no, they're off Taking the payroll. Taking away from the losses. Ron, That's all he's doing. they're off the payroll. $2.2 million. Oh, yeah. He's oh, freed I, up. I know that. that I and the New York that. writers are saying and he can't spend $1.8 on a one-year deal for Jack Morris, a guy who could win in the American League East Championship? First Come of on. all, he had more talent to win the American League Championship or to the talent to win it last year. didn't win it because not of his own pitching. So not enough pitching. That's why he didn't win it. Right. He had Tommy what John team, there. What do you want? What team would not benefit by the presence of a Jack Morris? Oh, I think Jack Morris could help just about any ball club he's okay. with. But okay. I, I, I so why are these? Are, why are the owners not making? Uh, 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 why? Why would an owner say, "Fine, let's have an arbitrator"? Why, why do we do this? I feel Jack. Not one of those owners ever told Jack Morris, "I'm sorry, Jack, you're not worth what you're asking." Rick, Rick. They just said, "No, Rick, we're why not didn't he signing." Offered, uh, why didn't he offer arbitration to the Tigers? The Tigers are offered to make him the best. He did, Ron. He, he is going he to arbitrate. Ten minutes to ten I'm minutes to twelve on Friday night. Why, why should a baseball player have the same right as any other citizen in this country, in this economic system, to go out and seek? Bids from the highest bidder and work for whatever franchise or business like they choose to work for. Where the agents can really come off. The owners the treated them like pieces of meat for so many years. Sure, they're pieces I'll of meat. I'll tell you one thing. Let me tell you something. When the owners what? did that, you saw ball players busting their you know what out there, which you don't see now. Sometimes. You see, not sometimes, sometimes. most of the time. Not true. All you have to look at the free agency is say this. When you, the year after they sign the contract, they always go down. Ninety-some percent go down. I that tells you it doesn't work. Look percent. at the records, Rick, and don't say it. I don't it. Just think look it's ninety-something. How can now, you say ninety-something percent? Let me tell you percent? something else. What, where did you get these statistics The Sporting from? News did stories on it. Not only did they do stories Show on it. Show me the article. They, I'd like they, to see ninety-something They also say fifty percent more of a chance, and they, sh they gave it right in there for an injury of a guy that just signed a long-term contract than a guy that's on the last year of a contract. That tells me right. they're dogs, Rick, the ball players, and I don't care whether you agree with it or not. Rick, my, my, my problem is... You sound like an owner now. I don't I'm have, not going to sign you, and I don't care if you agree with us listen, or not. You Rick, sound I don't like have an owner. Any, I, don't, you know, I don't have any difficulty with the players making the money they make. They should. And the reason they're making so much money is because the owners ripped them off for so many years. But the one point that Ron that makes... The reason? That, that one, yes, it is. The one point that Ron makes that, that I do think is salient is this. In no other sport do we see a John McEnroe a Jack Nicholas, 
uh, of Billy Sims and anybody. Well, that, maybe that's not a good example. Yeah, that's not a good example. Guaranteed, not at all. guaranteed four years from now that they're going to make $1.5 million, regardless of how they perform. Well, you've got to look to the other side of that, too, and say if salaries are escalating, they could at least lock a player in at a certain salary and be guaranteed that he's not oh, going to the owners are responsible agency. for these long-term oh, contracts. Oh, no, they're pretty stupid. In a, way, in a way, all kidding aside, in a way, I think what's going on are the owners are starting to protect themselves from themselves. And I think Uberoth is involved in this thing and I think when if he goes and testifies at this uh, antitrust hearing the grievance that the union is is bringing I think what what's happening is that the owners have finally decided look guys we got to protect ourselves you know, from ourselves own, nobody are. is holding a gun to their heads to pay these kind of salaries and I think now they're just getting in line and bringing everyone in you know line and they're here? protecting themselves from themselves you know, the method that they're using is illegal Rick, what, you're, what they're going to do now is they're going to uh, bite the hand that fed them for so many years and fed them very, very well. Who's going to bite what and hand? The players are biting the hand oh, uh, of, oh, of okay, the owners okay. and all that stuff. And what the owners are going to do is fine. From now on, one-year contracts, they're going to go out and they're going to do it because they're stupid to sign anybody for more than one year. And when you say there's collusion, I'm going to come back to you on something else. Bob McClure, I think it's Bob McClure, the washed-up left-hander. You keep bringing this up. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Makes 500000 He has an option year of his contract. Where it, Who the hell does he play for? Montreal. He pitched for Montreal? Yeah. $500,000 on the option year of his contract. What Montreal should have done was just released him, you know, and just say, hey, we're not taking the arbitration. We'll try to sign you for the minimum because that's all you He's not even worth that's that. That's what they're doing with uh, they signed. What, what they're, they signed this clown to $500,000. If they felt that, that, that there was, was collusion, they wouldn't have done they that. They exercised the option to keep their own plan. No, they One didn't exercise the option. Well, what they shouldn't have exercised the option because he's a bum. He well, won two games. They, at 50 they years didn't old. exercise because if they exercised their option, they could only reduce the contract by a 20% maximum. That's what you're seeing with Daryl Evans now. They didn't send him a contract because they want to reduce it more they than the 20%. They did exercise it, is what I'm trying to say. Montreal did. Yeah. To keep oh, okay. their own player. But I'm saying he makes five hundred thousand dollars a year for winning two games and it's, he's older than you and he can't pitch he's been done for what five years. What does this years. have to do with the issue of collusion? W w what I'm saying is they felt that if they let him go like that become a free agent another team oh, would, would, would pick him up and buy him. It's oh, very simple. Ridiculous. So what'd they give him five hundred thousand for? Because they're probably you know a little what? daft up Yeah like you a little they daft just, they up. Just, they're just bringing Larry Sorens into spring training so you know that I mean they must be desperate for That's pitching awesome. in Montreal. All right now look we got about five members of our crew who want to come up here and take my place to argue with you on this issue. I'm going to let you and Rick get the boxing this, gloves. The go at it. We got to go to a, this morning? <laughs> we got to go to a commercial and we'll be right back to let Ron Your continue to stick a foot in his mouth right after this. <laughs> Nothing to do weeknights? There's always something happening at the Plymouth Rock Saloon. Tuesdays, for instance, it's Lingerie Night, featuring some of southeastern Michigan's most beautiful girls. Your favorite top 40 and oldies music all the time. Great food, and there's never any cover charge. The Plymouth Rock, just off I-275 at Joy Road near Haggerty. And don't forget Pete Elotario's other place, the hot new Tangerine Room, Rivertown, just east of the Rensen. I'll meet you at the Plymouth Rock Saloon. When night falls, the stars begin to shine on America's greatest nighttime sport, harness racing. Windsor Raceway Post Time, 7.30, Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Where's the hottest dance music in town? The brand new Tangerine Room in the heart of Detroit's exciting Rivertown district. The Tangerine Room, where every night is ladies' night and Thursdays are extra special. The Tangerine Room, featuring Detroit's best-known disc jockeys. Hump the Grinder and Chris Crash. The Tangerine Room, where if the dance floor is too hot, you can cool off in an intimate upstairs bar or a spacious veranda. Great food from Chef Alexander, drink specials, and the kind of people you'd like to meet. All at the beautiful new Tangerine Room, Franklin and Riopel, just east of the Renaissance. Center. Legal problems are a fact of life these days. If you've been arrested, if you're contemplating filing for divorce, if you want to file for bankruptcy, if you've been involved in an accident, odds are you're going to have to choose a lawyer to represent your interest. Here in my office in Southfield, I see clients from all walks of life, all types of cases. Everybody is treated fairly. 
I fight for my clients and have gotten results in more than 10 years of practicing law. There's no charge for our first meeting. You're under no obligation, so call today. If I needed a lawyer to represent me, I'd want Warren Siegel. We're back with sports agent Rick Broden. I want to, you know... Want to embarrass yourself further is what you want to do, no, right? No, I'm just... Hey, that's a discussion between <laughs> him and me. You can take off and go to the Yeah, audience. let the crew come up and beat you up. Uh, <laughs> you were mentioning basketball. Right. And let's talk basketball. Okay, let's talk about how no free agency exists in basketball. Let's talk about no collusion. Rick, I disagree with that, and I'll tell you why. I think Joanna basketball's Olden. got a great system in that people go out and they do get offers. I know your client, John Long, and you had problems with the that's Pistons. Right. Vinny Johnson got an offer. Kelly Chapuka got an offer, and I think basically Baseball could solve its problems if they would have right of first refusal as the NBA does. Yes. That's not, uh, that's an interesting concept to think about, but uh, definitely this uh, exists in all aspects, all different sports. In basketball, I had a deal with another team uh, set, uh, set to go, and the general manager called me back. He says, I have indication from the Pistons that uh, they will match any offer we make. And further, there's a bigger complication at the, the ownership offer. level. This Maybe. owner is good friends with that owner, and then, uh, then they have an unwritten me, rule. They're not, they, this, they won't bid after each other's Rick. players. Now, that's illegal. Rick. That's illegal. Rick. Yes. Then, well, well, what, what, what are you going to do <laughs> yes. with Juwan Oldham, who's a, who's a bigger stiff than any of the agents, coming up and making a million dollars? This guy flat out can't play. The point I want to make can't is play, every, that every person in our <laughs> economic capitalistic system, whether you agree with that or not, that's the system we operate under, should have, should have the right to Stick go out and, and get bids and have the right to work for the person who they choose to work with who's right. going to pay them now, what? Now, gentlemen, the, the highest salary. Yeah. And gentlemen, that's the way the gentlemen, system works. Gentlemen, we have, we have a nice young man named Pat Collier who is on for the first time directing sports view today and he's freaking out going catatonic in there because, because of your big mouth we're running long. So we're going to go run to run another long. commercial break. We can't run 35 minutes on a 30 minute show. Let us talk. We'll be we'll right, be right back to let Ron continue to embarrass himself after I'm this final time Embarrass myself making you look like the fool that you are. <laughs> You've tried the rest, now try the best gourmet pizza in Michigan. You'll find there's a reason why Pizzuti's delivers more pizzas than any individual store in the state, more than 2,500 a week. But you can dine in or drive through at Pizzuti's too. Open every day from 10 a.m. till midnight until one on weekends. Great subs and sandwiches, more than a half pound of meat on every one. Daily bargain specials from two to three dollars. So drop in and see owner Ron Day and his son-in-law Doug Jayner at Pizzuti's. Easy to reach from anywhere in Metro Detroit at Telegraph and Ford Roads. Did you know that 125 million Americans didn't visit a dentist last year? Why? Not money. According to surveys, they're afraid. Well, modern technology has taken the fear out of visiting the dentist. Here at my office in West Bloomfield, we've got a relaxed, friendly atmosphere. I provide the highest quality care with an emphasis on the prevention of tooth and gum disease. So if you're one of the many people not seeing a dentist, you're taking a serious risk with your future health. Like smoking cigarettes, it's a ticking time bomb. Why are so many Detroiters saying meet me at Maxie's? First, the casual elegance of Maxie's Main Street lends itself to family gatherings or meeting new friends. Maxie's has great food at reasonable prices with seafood flown in fresh from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Happy hour five to seven daily with drink specials and free New England style pizza in the bar. Autumn brings Monday night football parties on Maxie's beautiful widescreen TV. And Maxie's is easy to reach from anywhere in Metro Detroit on Main Street, two blocks south of 11 Mile in Royal Oak. Maxie's Main Street, the place to be in the northern suburbs. We're back with sports agent Rick Broad. Rick, it's a two-way street. The owners are guaranteeing these players money for more than one year, and the players aren't guaranteeing anything. All they're laughing in their face, and they go out and lie down on the job. How do you explain that? I haven't seen one baseball player lying down on the job. Uh, you see Jason Thompson lately, who needed a <laughs> skirt even <laughs> to get on the field? All I'm telling you, Ron, is <laughs> needed, something a skirt, when say. a guy of the caliber of a player of a Jack Morris offering a team a one-year deal, no long-term is your complaining Come about. In, Jack, I'm saying a one-year deal, Come and he is in. not okay, signed. Okay. Something fishy is right. going on. Why didn't he off the Tigers? Hey, I want to ask a serious He's question. Doing to a serious question? The scenario that I mentioned uh, in the 
the opening segment. The players filing the grievance right now, right. maybe the arbitrator right. voiding the contract and the players going on strike. Is there a realistic chance of that happening? I really think so, and I think you're, you're seeing more and more indications of, of certain bad faith efforts by the owners. You have the case with Dennis Lamp, the grievance filed what against another Toronto, bump, another bump. Where, where the manager pulled him uh, from, from several games so he could not make his, uh, his, his, his incentive thing, and, and the option okay, was we're not closing, renewed. But I got There's all kinds of stuff like this Can going on. Bring the FBI and investigate these guys and see if they're really hustling. Then you'll really have a problem. <laughs> then I'll be on the, the player's end the, and not the owner's end. Then you would have nothing <laughs> to talk hey, about. Hey, guys, i got to get go. out of this show. We're, 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 we're out done. of time. The sponsor's Uncle Sports Al. Sports Fans Journal. Uh, Sports Fans Journal. Uncle Al sends along this T-shirt to you, Rick. We saw some people provide gift certificates sports for you today. The Tangerine Room, Plymouth Rock Saloon, Warren Siegel, the attorney in Southfield, Windsor Raceway, Ed Sports. And you don't have to listen to Ron on the radio. You can get part of the Red Barn. But you can listen to me on WRAF every morning, and you don't have to listen to Ron at all. Thank you to Rick Rhodes. Better listen to him while you're kidding. Not to be there much longer. Those changes they're making. <laughs>